Oh, who knows what this is? This is one of the prompt telescopes. This is, in fact, prop six. So when we said that there were six telescopes down in Chile, a little bit of a lie. We actually only have five there right now. This is the sixth one. Uh, the dome for Prop 6 is currently being used by another group for an all-sky survey experiment that they're doing. So this one sits here in the lab. It was originally put here for, uh, for testing and troubleshooting when we were first building the system. And then we rented out the dome to this other group to do their experiment. We haven't gotten out of this one down yet. But it is a fully functional telescope, so I can move it around. I swear it will not hit the ceiling. We did measure. These things are not cheap, so uh, we wanted to make sure of that. Uh, so here it is. So this sound that you hear, this sound haunts my dreams because I've spent so much time working on these telescopes. I've been down to do the maintenance at uh, Prompt about six or seven times now. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time hands-on with these telescopes. Uh, this is the mount here. Uh, in the pictures that you see of the Prompt telescopes down there, it's, it's a red color. Uh, it doesn't really matter. That's all cosmetic. The internals are essentially exactly the same as the ones down in Chile. Uh, so this is essentially exactly the kind of telescope that you're going to be using to do all of your projects for this course. So it looks like a fairly small telescope, fairly modest telescope. It's a 16-inch primary mirror, so the primary mirror is down here. Uh, so light comes from the sky, bounces off this mirror, bounces back up to a secondary mirror that's right here, and then it bounces down through this tube, and this tube goes through the center of the mirror. The mirror is shaped like a donut. There's a hole in the middle. And then on the back, we put our instrumentation, our filter wheels, our cameras. Right now, there's nothing back here, for those of you who can't see it, because the ceiling is not a very interesting thing to take photographs of, so we haven't bothered to put any instruments on back here. Uh, one quick note about the mirrors that are in this. Um, astronomical mirrors are not like the mirrors in your bathroom. So if you go and you're really bored while brushing your teeth and you look really closely at the mirror, in addition to finding toothpaste on the mirror, you'll notice that the mirror is actually a layer of glass with a reflective layer stuck on the back. Astronomical mirrors are exactly the opposite. They're a layer of glass with a reflective layer stuck on the front. And you might think to yourself, clues, if you're going to put the reflective layer on the front, why did you bother using glass? You don't need it to be transparent. That's true, but glass has a lot of great properties for us. Uh, it's very stable thermally. Uh, it reacts very well. The changes in temperatures react very uniformly. Uh, and more importantly, we can cheat. So something that you'll learn if you're in the, the lecture course for Astronomy 101, if you want to make an astronomical mirror, anybody know what shape you want it to be? It's a very specific shape, starts with a P, rhymes with parabola. You want to make it a parabola. Okay? That's, that's the best shape for making an astronomical mirror. But with glass, you can cheat. They learned a long time ago that if you take glass and you melt it, because molten glass is a liquid, and you put it in centrifuge so that it's spinning, it sloshes to the outside and makes an almost perfect parabola just by doing that. So they melt the glass, they spin it up, and then they let it cool while it's still spinning. Ta-da, you have a perfect parabola. So there are lots of reasons that we use glass. But anyway, just know that it's glass. Uh, so uh, we would then have our instruments on the back. The instruments look a whole lot like some of these things that I have over here on the table. So uh, this is one of our filter wheels. Um, it's unfortunately covered in dust and grime right now because it sits around in our lab. So there's a little piece of colored glass inside of here. It's a blue color for those of you who are close by. You can see it. Uh, and it's computer controlled, so we can change what filter is in there whenever we need to. And then behind the filter wheel would be our camera. I'll show you these. So this is what the big deal is. This is what one of our astronomical cameras looks like. Uh, there's one of these on each of the prompt telescopes. It doesn't really look like much. Um, it's worth about $10,000. It's a one megapixel camera worth about $10,000. You're probably thinking to yourself, Clues, that is not a very good deal. I could go to Best Buy and I could spend 250 bucks and get a 10 megapixel color camera. It's got a flash, a movie mode, it'd be great. Yes, but they're absolutely atrocious at taking pictures in very low light. And if we're doing astronomy, we're taking pictures of very faint things. So although it is only one megapixel, it's a very, very sensitive one megapixel. Uh, we can also cool it. If you take your digital, your point sheet digital camera and you take a picture in a dark room, it looks all speckly. There's all kinds of little colored lights all over the place. Those speckles are thermal noise. The heat of the camera itself is registering in the picture. So this we can cool down. And in fact, that's what all this junk on the back is all about. So this thing has inside of it a little thing called a Peltier cooler. A Peltier cooler works like a heat pump inside of an air conditioner, but it works on the atomic level. It actually takes high energy electrons from one side of the compound to the other side to get rid of the heat. Using this technique, we can cool this thing down to about 20 degrees below zero Celsius any day of the year. So that gets rid of all of that thermal noise that helps us get even more sensitive. So all of that, that's why the camera is so expensive. Although with all of that expense, 
How do you connect it to your computer? With uh, the same USB cable you use on your printer. So I always think that's kind of funny. So anyway, that's the camera, the filter wheel, we've got the mount, oh, we've got the telescope. That is a prompt package all in one. So, any questions? All right, fantastic.